hello everyone hope you are doing well so in this video we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 371 uh, it's a medium level problem uh, and yeah we can see that with the help of accuracy as well roughly 50 percent so yeah not that tough let's see what the problem is asking us to do so it says that you are given two zero index integer arrays nums1 and nums2 both having length n okay you are allowed to perform a series of operations possibly none now what can you do in that operation right so in an operation you can select an index i in the range 0 to n minus 1 that means you can select any index you want and swap the values of nums1 of i and nums2 of i that means select an index and swap the values in nums1 and nums2 for that particular index your task is to find the minimum number of operations required to satisfy the following conditions what are those conditions nums1 of n minus 1 is equal to maximum value among all the elements of nums1 okay that is nums1 of n minus 1 equals to maximum of just see all the elements of n minus 1 and the second condition is nums2 of n minus 1 is equal to maximum value among all the elements of nums2 that is nums2 of n minus 1 equals to maximum of all these values we return an integer denoting the minimum number of operations needed to meet both the conditions or minus 1 if it is not possible to satisfy both the conditions right so yeah uh, basically in short what it is saying you are given two arrays just see this is array one this is array two okay you can perform some operations if that is required okay now your aim is to satisfy some conditions what what are those conditions the conditions are the last element in nums one this one the last element in nums one should should be should be equals to the maximum element in this array okay now we are including this element as well so obviously it has to be equal similarly the last element in nums2 should be equal to the maximum element in this array okay so nums1 is concerned about nums1 nums2 is concerned about nums2 okay the last element has to be the largest element remember you can have equal elements for example you can have a 7 here as well but again the maximum value is present here okay now if that is not the condition then what happens you can swap some elements right you can you can swap elements for some indices in these two areas for example one two seven four five three okay what you can do you can pick up a any index that you want suppose you pick this index okay what you'll do you'll swap these two elements that means the l the element at at ith index in nums one and element at ith index in nums two is swapped so the configuration becomes like this one five seven four two three this is just an example i gave I'm, I'm not i'm not saying you swap it but this is what you do so what you have to do your task is to do minimum number of swaps possibly none so that the condition is satisfied which can which condition the last element in both the arrays should be the maximum element simple now let's try to see what this example is saying so we have two arrays one two seven four five three now just see for this array the condition is already satisfied 7 is the maximum element in this array great but what about this array the condition is not satisfied the last element remember the last element has to be the maximum the last element is 3 and 3 is smaller than 4 and 5 so condition is not satisfied okay so what you will do we'll just see we'll just see how we can swap it so one option is you simply swap these two elements if you swap these two elements the array becomes like 1 2 3 4 5 7 now condition for this is also satisfied this is also satisfied right you can take other routes as well what's what's the other route you start with one two seven four five three suppose you swap uh, these two so you get four one two seven five three right still the condition is not satisfied for this array swap these two again so four five seven one two three so just see now this is what uh, you want right so in the first in the first type of operation or rather in the first configuration what we did we swapped the last element so just after one operation your conditions were satisfied and if you go via this route you need two steps to you know to satisfy your condition so that means obviously we'll take the first route right so answer is one the minimum number of operations required to make the last element in both the arrays as maximum is this one right similarly let's see this guy this is two three four five nine eight eight four 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 okay first thing we can see that the condition is not satisfied because this is nine yes this is the maximum element in nums one but this is four and this is not the maximum element right because we have eight which is larger than it right 
so what we can do we can probably this is index 0 1 2 3 4 let's swap these two so 2 3 4 5 4 8 8 4 4 9 this is the first swap right this is the first swap so just see it says it becomes 2 3 4 5 4 and 8 8 4 4 9 great now what we can do then we can swap the third index so 0 1 2 3 these two are swapped when you swap these two you get 2 3 4 4 4 8 8 8 4 5 9 okay 8 8 4 5 9 now just see is the condition satisfied the last element here is 4 what is the maximum element in this array that is 4 only so yes satisfied for this one what about this one the maximum element is 9 and that is the last element so just after two swaps just after two swaps we were able to you know satisfying the condition that we want right now the last one 154 and all so 154 253 now in this case you can just see whatever swaps you do you will not be able to satisfy the condition now logically see why is that the reason being the last look the elements at the last position are not changing these will be the two elements in nums1 and nums2 maybe you swap it so the last element of nums1 become last element of nums2 and vice versa but it is not possible that this element comes at this position no only these elements at the same position are just swapping right now this is four this is four this is three that means all the other elements in this array should be for example in whichever array 4 is the last element in whichever array 4 is the last element all the elements on the left hand side should be less than equals to 4 right but we see here we have a 5 right here we have a 5 so that means the maximum of these two elements that is 4 here right no element in the array should be larger than 4 but we see here 5 is larger than 4 so ultimately it will not be possible to you know transform the array in the way we want hence the answer is minus 1 simple right Let's see the constraints. The number of elements in the arrays we can have is just 1000. So yeah, pretty low constraints. The elements that we have is, uh, or rather the magnitude is 10 raised to 9, right? Now, again, let's go to the intuition. As I told you, if this is the array, if this is the array, so these are the two arrays, right? I can just swap elements at the same position, this, right? I can just swap the elements at the same position. I cannot swap the indices, okay? So that means, there are two possibilities. What are the two possibilities? I have n1, I have n2, I mean nums1 and nums2. Either the last element of nums1 and nums2. So suppose initially the last element of nums1 is x, the last element of nums2 nums is y. Okay. So either the configuration will be like this, right? Or the configuration will be this becomes y, this becomes x. Right? This becomes y, this becomes x. Now, since we know that, what are the possibilities of the last element? Okay. So when the last element of n1 is x and n2 is y, we can just find out now how many swaps are needed, right? We can just find out how many swaps are needed. Similarly, let's swap these two elements. Suppose now the last element of n1 is y and n2 is x, then just calculate how many swaps are needed. The minimum of these two will be your answer. Now comes the question, how do you calculate the swaps? Simple, right? Suppose you come at this index, the last element, assume that the last element for this is x, and for n2 is y, x and y, right? Now for index i, okay, for index i, if in n1, the element at the ith index, if that is greater than x, or the element at the ith index for n2 is greater than y, then that means the condition for either one of them is not satisfied. So what do you do? You just swap these two elements. When you swap these two elements, what happens? n2 of i actually comes here and n1 of i comes here right again check the condition now is the condition satisfied now is this guy less than equals to x and this guy less than equals to y if yes we are good to go otherwise after swapping also since the condition is not satisfied that means it is not possible to perform this operation and hence we simply return minus one right because there are only two options one is the original order of the indices the second is after swapping the elements at that index right if none of them is satisfying the condition that means it, it is not possible to basically transform this array simple so we return minus one that's it right the main intuition here is you can you can just have two possible configurations either x y or y x just consider both this configuration and and you are done right now 
again this is more of an uh, implementation based problem i would say so let's see the code code is simple it may seem to be a little long for you again this was a contest so i i wrote whatever uh, you know came to my mind in the first go but yeah it's actually easy don't go the length it's just that i've made separate functions for each each one of them right this is the main function this is nums1 this is nums2 i initialize my answer with the maximum possible integer and this is the number of elements i have right now what what i am doing i am creating copies of this array why i am doing that you will understand that but suppose i pass the n1 n2 right n1 n2 so i am creating deep copy that means uh, uh, the original copy of those elements right so n1 copy and n2 copy i call this function that i have written now just see what this function is doing these are the two arrays suppose the last element is n1 is x and last element is n2 is y I just calculated what are the number of operations needed if this is the configuration, right? So these are the number of elements. I traverse from zero to n minus one, right? If at the ith index n one of i is greater than n one of n minus one, that means if the condition is violated for nums one, or if n two of i is greater than n two of n minus one, because the largest element has to be the last element, right? If, if for any one of them this condition is violated, what we do? We increase the number of operations that we perform. we swap the two elements right at ith index we swap the two elements okay suppose the element at ith index was a and b in n1 it was a in n2 it was b and then we again compare now is this condition satisfied so we again check again if the condition is violated just see it's the same condition again if the condition is violated that means even after the swap it is not possible we simply return minus 1 simply return minus 1 However, if after the swap the condition is satisfied, what we do? We do not return minus one. Right? You you will not go here. Just that you have just increment into number of ops, right? So we do it for all the indices. Finally, we return the number of operations needed, right? So, uh, where was I? Yeah, this one. Current operations equals to this. You call this function. Now, if current operation equals to minus one, you simply return minus one. As I told you, because you return minus one when even after the swap the condition is not satisfied. Now, the next condition. The next condition is. Initially, you were having x and y as the last element. Now make y and x. This is for n one. This is for n two. And again, call that function. Now, what I'm doing? I'm just swapping the last element of the two arrays, right? We need to swap it, right? I'm just swapping it. Now, what happens? You again call the function. You again call the function. Here, I'm calling the function on the original array. Now, if some of you, if you are thinking why we have created a copy, we have created a copy because. when you call this function we are actually swapping the elements right we are actually swapping the elements so when you call the function for the first time and suppose you do some swaps right so what happens the order of the elements change right uh, some elements of n1 can go into n2 and vice versa so that's why we need the original array both the time we call the function we need the original array so that is why i created a deep copy okay so first i pass the copy and the second time i pass the original array again the same thing now this is 1 plus whatever you get why 1 because we have swapped the last elements the 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 uh, elements at the last index so this is this one is for this step and whatever you get from the function if current operation is minus 1 return minus 1 else just update your answer and finally return the answer right so uh, simple stuff a couple of traversals and you are done now you can solve this question using one traversal as well right you write the functions as that you see what the minimum value at the ith index what the maximum value at the ith index and you know add some if else and if else checks right that would also work but yeah this is something that came to my mind so i wrote it like this now this is another function how to create a deep copy so i i i just check the length of the array create a new array and simply copy it system dot array copy right a, a simple java function that uh, makes a deep copy for me right uh, so yeah that's it for this problem i hope you learned something new from this video do support it by giving me a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well uh, in case you have any queries or you had any other solutions that you wrote during the contest mention that in the comment section so that it can help other folks as well right okay great take care bye bye